Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing procedural learning. Okay, right, so we've seen that procedural learning can be uh, split into these two types, non-associative procedural learning and then associative procedural learning. And within non-associative procedural learning we have two types of uh, learning, habituation and sensitization. And then in associative uh, procedural learning we have two types as well. We have classical class uh, slash sorry, uh, Pavlovian conditioning uh, in which uh, an individual learns to pair two stimuli together basically. Okay, and now what we're going to turn our attention to in this video now is the second form of associative uh, procedural learning, which is known as instrumental conditioning, or it's also sometimes called uh, operant conditioning. Okay, so instrumental slash operant conditioning. Okay, and Basically, as with uh, Pavlovian conditioning, I'm going to start off by telling you a story and then we'll come back and see what lessons we can learn from it. Okay, so basically, what you're going to do is, in this experiment, you're going to uh, take a rat, okay, a hungry rat, and you're going to put it in a box, okay? So, this is the, our box here and we're going to put our rat in the box. And I'm slightly better at drawing rats, I think, than I am at drawing um, dogs. Okay, so here's our rat, and it's in this box. Right, and it's a hungry rat, and that's very important. Motivational state is an extremely important part of instrumental slash operant conditioning. And we're basically going to have this a special set of apparatus in this box. Basically, the rat is going to have a lever here. Okay, so this in red here, this is a lever. And basically, every time the rat presses this lever, let's say um, a food pellet will drop from the roof. Okay, so we will put a food pellet in, or we might even have some automatic setup whereby every time the rat presses the lever, it releases a food pellet into the box for the rat. Okay, so. Basically, this is the setup. So, this rat initially has never been in this box before. It's never done anything like this before in its life. Okay, so it's been put in this box. It hasn't had a good meal in quite some time. Okay, so it's very hungry. And uh, basically, what it's going to do is it's going to start off by just exploring the box. Okay, and then it might just happen to, you know, bang this lever down, okay? So it might just happen to bang into the lever and force the lever down, and then what will happen is a food pellet will drop from the roof and it will eat the food pellet. It'll be very, very happy, okay? But it won't instantly know, oh, that was the lever that did that. No, it won't know that, okay? What it will do is it will take a few more tries to do that. It will have to continue exploring the box because the food pellet wasn't that big. It hasn't fooled itself up yet. Okay, so it continues exploring the box, and then it just happens to bang into the lever again, and then a food pellet appears again, and basically there'll be a few trials of this happy accident, basically, and then gradually what the rat will become, what well, will, what the rat will gradually learn is that pressing the lever, banging into the lever, banging the lever down is associated with a food pellet um, dropping from the roof. Okay, so this time, basically, what it is, uh, this form of associative learning is an association not between two stimuli this time, but instead between a behavior which is pushing the lever down and then a stimulus. Okay, and the stimulus needs to perform uh, some sort of motivational power. Well, it needs to perform it needs to saturate some sort of motivational need that the rat has, basically. And obviously, feeding needs are one of the main motivational needs that the rat has. Okay, so in this case, this um, food pellet is saturating uh, the need to feed, basically. Okay, so motivation is extremely important here. This stimulus needs to have some sort of motivational power. Okay? Right, uh, so 
basically what has happened is the rat will gradually learn to push this lever so soon the rat will be there pushing the lever all the time and it will get food pellets and it will eat all the food pellets until this rat is absolutely full once the rat is full then the motivation leaves it okay and then it will stop the behavior it won't just continue pressing the lever once it's full okay so once the motivation has gone then this beha this behavior yeah, stops being expressed because uh, it was only being expressed to saturate the motivation basically and once the motivation has gone the behavior won't be expressed anymore. Okay, so this is instrumental slash operant conditioning that you can get a rat to perform some behavior for some stimulus that will saturate a motivational need. Okay, and this is common knowledge basically. Everyone knows that you can train dogs uh, using pieces of sausage or dog treats or whatever. Okay, so you are appealing to their motivational needs basically. You get them to do a trick such as sitting for you and then you reward it by giving them the treat and then they are more likely to do that in the future. Okay, so this is how you uh, get them to perform a certain behavior. Um, okay, right. Uh, so now let's uh, put in some uh, fancy nomenclature. Okay, so basically people would say that the rat's behavior, that the rat's pressing the lever has been positively reinforced. Okay, so they would call this positive reinforcement. Okay, so basically when the rat performs the behavior it receives something that uh, it regards as a reward, a stimulus that it regards as a reward. And what it, it regards as a reward depends on its motivational state. Okay, so basically you can get an individual to perform certain behaviors by giving them rewards, okay? And this is what's known as positive reinforcement. We would say that the behavior has been in the rat of pressing the lever has been positively reinforced because we have reinforced the behavior by giving it a reward uh, for doing this behavior. So we've added in the reward basically and that's where the positive comes from because we're giving it something, okay? Right, uh, now, uh, as I say, the motivational state is very, very important here, and the neural circuits that under underlie this are quite a bit more complex than, for instance, the neural circuits which underlie the forms of learning that we've previously looked at. Okay, now, related to this, and also in the concept of instrumental slash operant conditioning is the concept of negative reinforcement. Now this is a slightly different concept, okay, and most people, unless they actually know what negative reinforcement is, would mix this up with something else. They would mix it up with punishment, okay, which is another form of operant conditioning. Okay, so let me tell you what negative reinforcement is, okay. So basically, let me describe another experiment for you. This is a slightly scarier box for a rat to go into, basically. Okay, so we've got another one of these boxes, but this time it's not a press a lever and you'll get a piece of food box. Instead, it's a, I'm going to put an electric, um, I'm gonna put a metal grid on the bottom, uh, which will sh uh, give the rat an electric shock, basically. Okay. So, this will deliver an electric shock to the rat, okay, to the rat's feet. So, I'm going to put my rat in here, okay, and it's not going to enjoy being in here. So, I will then turn on this um, base plate and it will deliver an electric shock to the rat's feet in a, uh, a certain number of times a minute, let's say, okay. And then there is a lever in the box, and basically, if the rat presses the lever, Let's say the lever will uh, stop the electric shock from being delivered for a whole minute, okay? So let's say my floor here delivers an electric shock every 10 seconds, okay? So it delivers six in a minute, okay? Uh, then if the rat presses the lever, it will stop delivering them for an entire minute. So the rat will get um, some you know, some alleviation from uh, this scenario for a minute if it presses the lever. 
Okay, so I put my rat in there, and it's not going to like it, it's uh, quite nasty, um, but the rat will run around trying to explore the box, and it might just bump into this lever, and then the lever will stop the foot shocks being delivered, okay? Uh, now, the rat won't instantly know that it was the lever that causes the um, um, cessation of the foot shocks. Okay, so it will continue running around, and then the foot shocks will come back on, and then it will just happen to bump into the lever again, and then the foot shocks will go back off again. Okay, and it, this will continue on for a few times, and then gradually the rat will learn to press the lever to stop the foot shocks. Okay, so again we have got this behavior in the rat. We have got the same behavior as we got from this nicer box up here, but we've done it by a nastier means. Okay, so we have negatively reinforced the behavior in this rat, the lever pressing behavior. And the way we did it was by giving the rat the stick. Well, what we did is we removed a nasty stimulus. Okay, so whenever it performed the behavior, we removed the nasty stimulus. Okay, so basically, that's why it's called negative reinforcement, because basically we are reinforcing the lever-pressing behavior by removing, i.e. taking away negative um, the stimulus. We're taking away the stimulus when it performs the behavior, and this is a nasty stimulus. Okay, so positive reinforcement is about enforcing a behavior, uh, reinforcing a behavior rather, by giving the individual a treat every time it performs that behavior. Negative reinforcement is about reinforcing the behavior by taking away a horrible stimulus every time the individual does that behavior. Okay, so it is not about punishing the rat. Um, that's a, another form of operant conditioning, but we haven't got there yet. So there is positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, and then finally the other form of operant conditioning is punishment. Okay, so positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement were all about getting the rat to do fit something. We wanted the rat to press the lever. Punishment is about stopping um, an animal from doing something, okay? So if uh, you want to stop uh, a behavior in a certain animal, let's say, and I'm going to take the example of a dog, okay? So let's say we've got our dog here, and I'll try and draw a better picture of a dog. So here we have our um, dog, let's say. Okay, there we go. Here's our dog. And let's say um, the dog We've given it its bowl of food, okay? So here's the bowl of food for the dog. And uh, basically, the dog's eating its food. And let's say you try and take that bowl away from the dog, and the dog growls, okay? So that's a bad behavior. You don't want the dog to growl at you. You don't want your pet dog to growl, okay? So how are you going to get rid of that behavior? Well, one of the ways of doing it is by punishing the dog, taking out a stick and hitting it, or shouting at it delivering some horrible stimulus. Okay, so basically the concept of punishment is when you give, is when you want to reduce a behavior, when you want to extinguish a behavior in an animal, such as the growling at you. Uh, basically, every time the animal does that behavior, you deliver a horrible stimulus. Okay, so a punishing stimulus. Okay, uh, such as shouting or hitting or something along those lines. And then the dog will gradually learn if you do that stimulus every time uh, the dog performs this behavior, it will gradually learn not to do that behavior. Okay, so the behavior will extinguish basically. So positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement are about training an individual to do a behavior, whereas punishment is about removing a behavior. Most people, if you ask them what negative reinforcement is, they would give you the definition of punishment. No, negative reinforcement is about getting an individual to do a behavior uh, by removing a horrible stimulus whenever uh, the individual does that behavior, whereas punishment is about removing a bad behavior by giving a horrible stimulus every time uh, the organism or the individual uh, does that behavior. Okay, right, so that now concludes our discussion of procedural learning.